All right, hey, welcome back to Mechanical Pros. We got a great one for you today. We are talking about how to pull a pulley or a, or a shiv off of a shaft. Now this is, uh, this is something that if you've been in the business long enough, it can be one of the hardest parts of the job. Um, we've broken a few shafts, we've broken a few pulleys, we've broken a few shivs. This is not a real life demonstration of what it really is like. Usually there's a lot of rust and corrosion and nastiness involved in these types of things. Brian, tell me what we got going on here. Yeah. This is a, this is one that everyone kind of, it's a rite of passage yep. into this industry. You're right. That's a great description too. Because when you do this, you do a couple of them, you'll have a lot of skin in the game, literally and figuratively. Because uh, it's a knuckle buster if there ever was one. So we'll talk about some of the, you know, common tools to use for this and our best practices. Everybody's going to have their own favorite way of doing things, but just over the years, kind of what I found worked best for me. Uh, number one, it's a good pair of leather gloves. You know, these cut resistant gloves, they're, they're good and they do their job, but it's hard to beat a good thick pair of leather gloves, man, because you're doing a lot of uh, tightening bolts, wrenches slipping, lots of chances to bust your knuckles up and cut yourself. So first of all, make sure you're wearing your gloves, you know. Um, next thing we know, we're going to need some type of a good um, lubricant. We just happen to have WD-40 here. There's lots of brands out there, Crow Oil, you name it. It's it, not brand specific, it's just what I happen to have. But you're going to need this too um, because we want to lubricate these shafts before and after. It, it just helps the process of sliding it on there. Another big one is sandpaper. So maybe you will or maybe you won't need your sandpaper when you're pulling the pulleys and shivs off but you will definitely want it when you put them back on there. In this one, there's not much shaft sticking out, so there's nothing really to sand. This one, a little bit, you know, maybe you'll have to do that. This is a different style. We're gonna pop this off a different way than we will this pulley. But the main thing is after you get them back off, before you put them back on there, you really wanna sand those shafts down, clean them up real good, spray them down with some sort of a lubricant because there's very tight tolerances on these guys in there. And the littlest bit of rust or burr on that shaft is going to keep you from sliding it on there good. A lot of times you may need to take a, a file and file the shaft down a little bit to smooth it out. But So we'll talk about um, the two different types of pulley. This one has a little push-off hub on it, so usually you sh usually shouldn't need to use a puller on this guy. It's got a couple bolts here. You just That's how it's bolted in to begin with. We've loosened them up a little bit, and you simply take them out of this, which not a threaded hole on this bushing, but the pulley's threaded. Man and then you move them up to that guy. <laughs> yeah, I think that didn't get there. We go. And then if you notice these other holes in this guy, they are threaded. So what we're doing is we're going to thread them in there, and all it's going to do is these two little bolts are going to push down and push enough pressure on this pulley to separate these two. This is kind of tapered. So as, as you tighten them up and it sucks in this pulley onto that hub, it's tapered and it gets tight, you know, the diameter gets smaller or the clearances between the two, the more you tighten it down, it locks it in place. The opposite happens now when we push it off. It pushes it off to the smaller. Well, hopefully this goes smooth. One thing I'll say about this, like John said, they're never like this. These bolts are not very high tensile steel. So nine times out of 10, if this thing would have been 10 years old or so, I'm about to snap these bolts off because it's going to be so seized to that shaft or rust and wear. So a good, good thing to do if you got the time, take the bolts out. They'll come out easy for you. But it's when you go to do this and push them apart, a lot of times you'll have to put so much torque on these bolts, it'll simply break them. But see, that's brand new, how nice and easy that pulls off there. And Beautiful. that collar comes out. It never happens like that in real life, ever. If you can take these to a bolt, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, we've got local places and towns that do nothing but sell screws and bolts and get really high strength of these guys and you'll have a better chance of not breaking them. Mm -hmm. We'll make other videos about how what happens when you do break them because it's very common, especially when you're in cooling towers, this is what they use and they're completely deteriorate. You're lucky to even get them out, much yeah. less use them to push anything off with. Yeah, I mean, we've used everything from a, from <laughs> a torch a to, stuff, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. we've, we've, we've been a lot. We've been down that road a bunch. We've, we've gotten much better at it, but you've yeah, got we, a five we learned the hard way. Too. Yep, yep, yep. Oh yeah, we, we do it all. Sometimes we have to cut the shaft and go press the bearing off. Yep. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You can only spend so much time, you know, cutting your hands up and breaking stuff where you just gotta back up and punt. 
Now we would say we're going to change the bearings, which would be the most common reason we're going to remove this pulley is to get to these bearings behind it. You never know though, maybe the pulley's old and it's notched and you need to change it, but you just simply take it off just like that. But this is now where, whether we're putting the pulley back on the shaft or we're going to go ahead and pull these bearings off, man, you really want to clean this up as good as you can. You want to have that just so smooth. See. I don't know if the camera will show it, there's actually little bits of rust starting on this shaft. That little tiny bit of surface rust will give you fits on that bearing. You just want that just as smooth and as clean as it can be. Like I said, if it's got burrs on it, go get a file, file it down, sand it down, spray it with your lubricant, and then start pulling your bearing off. Or vice versa, I'm putting this back on, I would want to do the same thing there. Make sure that's really clean and good to go before we put this guy back on there. And again, when these are new, it doesn't get any easier. They're just, they just go like butter. But it never happens like that in the real world. Um, usually it's a lot of four letter words and some blood left on that unit and some things to get it done. And as you can see, lots of sharp edges, lots of things to hurt yourself on with these. So that's for this style, that's all there is to it. Biggest thing to take away, these little bolts are probably gonna break on it when you go to push that off if it's been in service for a while. Not a bad idea when you go to pick the new ones up, maybe get 10 extra ones and just keep them on your truck. Pretty common thread size there for that. Okay, now we're gonna talk about um, removing our motor sheave. So this is a little bit different setup on this guy. We have a set screw back here that is screwed down onto the little motor shaft that keeps this from moving. Um, so first thing we would wanna do is loosen that set screw. I've already done this. Again, like you said, John, this is a nice new application. Um, a lot of things to be aware of when you're removing these set screws on a unit that's been in service for a long time is they will be very tight. Um, it's easy to go too hard with your Allen wrenches and strip those dudes out and then you're really screwed. Then you're having to drill them out. So again, this is where this stuff comes in port. As soon as you get started and turn everything off, maybe go ahead and shoot some in everywhere. Let it set for a few minutes while you go get the rest of your tools out of the truck. Soak it, soak it, soak it. Best thing to do. And then when you get to torquing on that, if you've done them a few times, you'll know about the point where it's about to round that thing out. So just be careful not to do that. Um, it, can, it can spend a lot of extra. The best thing after you do it, you're going to have to drill it out. You, mm -hmm. You're not really going to want to put heat on it being that close to the motor. So we've got our set screw loose, and now we're going to use a three-jaw puller to remove this uh, sheave. This puller in particular, it could be configured as a two jaw. You can remove these and put them anywhere. So if we just had one on this side and this side, then we just have a two jaw puller. But any chance you can use the three jaw, you're just getting another point of contact and it's gonna pull it off a little bit better. So we'll just do a really quick demonstration of how this will go. These things are a little wonky there and it doesn't hurt if you got an extra hand around you. You go on the, uh, on the, on, back, on on the, the back, back side of the yeah. pulley, yes sir. Let me loosen this guy's got us here a little bit. There we go. And as you know, you would normally have a, a socket or a wrench on that turn in it. And it's, you know, really important to keep that contact there as you're turning it. If one jaw were to drop off, you could bend or warp this. So you want to have all things contacted. Again, you would not be turning this with your fingers. You would be using a wrench or a drill with a socket on it, maybe a big impact gun to buzz that dude right off there and it'll slide right off and then you've now you've got your sheave free and again the only time you would probably be doing this on the motor this this will need replacement before this ever will whether it be a belt adjustment issue or something like that you'll see these wear quicker than these typically do so you replace these more often so you might be replacing this or perhaps you might be changing the whole motor out Either way, you got to take this off. But same exact thing you want to look out for over there. You got to make sure this shaft is nice and clean and smooth. It doesn't have any defects on it. And then your shift should slide right back on there. Line everything up, bolting her down. Good to go. Let me just confirm one thing. Yep. So on these, uh, on the three jaw, we want this, uh, we want the center, you want the center piston here. I don't know how to, the, yep. the all thread bolt directly only the on only, only on the shaft only and on right and see how that shaft's got a little divot in it yeah that's they put that there just so it'll seat right in there and because you got to have it centered yep. that's a great point if it you don't want to be pushing against the, no absolutely the, the not shift, or if you're it. you know as you go up this is a small unit you, you could have a motor shaft that's 
say an inch or more, if you're not centered on that motor shaft, it's gonna pull the sheave at an angle and it's gonna damage it and probably damage your motor a little yeah. bit too, so very important. And worst case, like I said, we got this thing is 20 years old and we can't get it to come off. Uh, behind John there, he's got option number three. Oh yeah. Which would be, we just, we don't really care anymore. We might just break this sucker and yep. that's the way it is. Yep. This is a hydraulic three jaw puller. It works exactly the same way. You set it up the same way, same little center point, except you've got this jack handle. And I think this one will do, uh, I think it's five tons of pressure on this thing. Yeah. So yeah, it's either coming off or we're gonna break this thing. Yeah, we've probably broken more things. We've broken fix, a few. Fix things and we've broken that. these as well. Mm -hmm. When you get on bigger gear, you think there's no way to break these. Oh yeah, you, you can break them. Yeah. So this would be last resort or you're working on much bigger stuff, towers. Mm -hmm. It's just been seated on there forever and you really gotta put a lot of force behind it. There's a limit to what you can do with these little manual pullers before mm -hmm. they just, they break on you. And then you break out the big dog and if that doesn't work, and it's probably time to get the saws all out and start cutting yeah. stuff apart. So a few different options. Um, we're going to make some other videos talking about changing other types of uh, devices like bearings and tower hubs and all that good stuff. But we just want to start yeah. here. And pretty yeah, basic one you'll see quite a bit out there is this three jaw puller. A really handy tool. Every technician running service should have that on his truck. Multiple different sizes too. They come smaller. They get much larger. Um, you can get these anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. Very readily available. Well, good deal. All right. So that, th there you have it. That's how to pull a uh, pulley or a shiv without without breaking it. Hopefully. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll show you how to break them later. You can break them. Yeah. Um, thanks for checking us out. Uh, hit that like. Hit that subscribe. Uh, we love to hear back from you. Uh, this is a big part of uh, how we can give back to the community. So hit those comments. And uh, if you have something specific, we would love to make it for you.